What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Buff Deck Racing. I want to get better at riding. I want to be better at racing. I want to be a better rider. Just want to get better. How am I going to do that? First things first, I need a new clutch lever. I don't know if you've seen like about three videos ago or so. I ran into a post at East Fork MX while I was riding. Came over a jump, pinned it when I landed. There was a turn there, kept going straight, ran right into a pole. Anyways, my whole hydraulic master cylinder assembly piece, whatever you want to call it, is gone. So that's the first step to become a better rider because it's really hard to ride without a... The clutch fully functions, it just it falls down because we have a zip tied there. Not good. Anyways, new clutch will be coming in. They're kind of expensive, so I just haven't gotten to that yet. And it's not necessarily hard to find, but getting the right one because there's a few different versions. I'm just going to go with the OEM one. Anyways, that guy is on the way. The next step is I really want to have two sets of eyes on the track. What I mean by that is having me, the rider, the racer on the track, but also another set of eyes off the track in the stands or wherever, being able to communicate. So I want to get a headset, a Senna, or a few other different brands so I can have a headset in my helmet and then my dad will have a headset outside saying, hey, take this right, or there's someone behind you, or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, something just to make me a little bit better of a rider knowing my peripherals and just like seeing hey this is coming up you, you're gonna want to do this so anything to just make me a better rider on the track I just think that would improve my racing also I have a race at route 62 the track that I've been going to for the past two videos also going there this video I have a race there October 31st and November 1st is that Halloween weekend no trick-or-treating for me, I'll be racing at Route 62. So I wanna get as much practice as I can in before then. Also another thing, my tire, I don't know. It's a little bit worn, could definitely use a new one, but they're pretty pricey and it's just gonna get shredded again, especially since it's winter. Don't really do a whole lot of dirt riding. Sometimes I tend to ride the roads a little bit, not the best idea. Anyways, I also just hit 90 hours on my bike. Absolutely insane, I can't believe I've had it for that long. I bought the bike with roughly 18 hours on it. So that would be, I don't even know what the math is, but I've had it for a while. I've done a lot of riding on it. Totally, completely improved as a rider in that amount of time. 10 more hours hitting 100, absolutely insane. I'll have it for the next however long that bike lasts. Definitely have to do a top end coming up within the next 50 hours or so, if I even have the bike at that point. Anyways, it's about due for my 10 hour oil change. So there's lots of different oil brands and different ways you can go with this. I run Amsoil 10W50. Um, and then for an oil filter, I run the KNN 652. Um, just the oil filter, there's a few different ones. You can get the OEM one, there might be a few other brands that make them. I like to run the KNN. I don't I don't think there is a difference to notice just to make sure that it's filtering your oil well and make sure that everything is going good. Um, the first thing to do obviously is crack the drain plug and get all the oil out of the bike. After you've done that there's one of two steps that you can do first. I don't think it really matters which one. I usually tend to do the oil filter first so you'll take those two screws out. Once you got those guys you'll pull the little cover off and then you'll take some pliers and I like to like almost squeeze it the other way and then grasp onto that filter and pull it out. Then once you get it out, get some of that oil off and just toss around the garbage. You don't really need it anymore. After you've gotten that guy out, you'll go down to the other, the next step and that is the screen mesh filter and it just kind of screens away some of the metal particles as they get shredded in your case. Um, anyway, so you crack that open. That's a 13 millimeter. You'll take the tweezers or the pliers again, the needle nose pliers, pull that puppy out. And this one is reusable. So what I usually do is head over to the air compressor and then just blow it out, get all those metal shavings out. Then once you're done, you can just go ahead and slide it right back in and put that guy down. Then make sure you get your fresh oil filter. Go ahead and slide that in, put those two bolts in. I like to use Loctite. They don't call for a lot of weight on those guys, so use Loctite so that they don't fall out. But if you over tighten them, it's really, really easy to snap the heads of the bolts. So I usually torque them down to 7.4 pounds for each of the little bolts. Make sure you get yourself a nice torque wrench, get those a 7.4. You don't wanna go too much farther than that because you don't wanna risk snapping that bolt. As for the screen mesh, 
I usually run 11.1 pounds. I keep this written down. I also keep a timesheet of every oil change I've done at the hours and the date. And then I keep my torque specs here just so that it's easier to remember. So I don't have to look them up every time. Uh, once you finish that, go ahead and fill her up. It's kind of weird that these bikes take 1.1 quart. So the first oil change you do, you're gonna have to buy two of these. But other than after that going on, so for several of them, I've never had to buy two again. Um, you'll just have one for that 0.1 quart every time. So one of these plus 0.1 quarts from the other one, your spare. Once your oil change is completely done, the next step that you're gonna wanna do is take that air filter and check it out. So you'll crack open the box once you get that open. It's a little bit difficult. You kind of just like reach into this panel, pull it apart, there's a few little snappy things and then just take a look at your filter. Every 10 hours, I change mine. If it's really not that dirty, you could probably go another few hours to change it. I usually keep two on deck just so that I can have one ready to go the next time and I don't have to clean it and wait for it to dry every time. So then I'll take that filter out, get the new one ready, I'll oil it up with some oil filter spray, slap that guy in and you're ready to go. That's gonna wrap it up for just a little bit of maintenance on the bike. Now, it is currently Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday, we are leaving for 62. About an hour away from our house, not too bad. Gonna get the bikes loaded up, head over there. That's when I'll probably catch you next. All loaded up, got the, uh, got the 350. Headed to 62, stop by a gas station first. Need some gas for my bike. Let's go. All right, we're sitting, waiting to go ride. Really no waiting, just getting dressed up. But it is freaking cold. Like super, super cold. Oh. Guys are shredding though. My turn. Well, that didn't last long. Clutch <laughs> is already gone. Stress, zip tying or up a bit. Track is super prime right now and super fun to shred, but my clutch keeps falling up. I might as, I'm gonna have to get a new one, but. Let's hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can fix it for the rest of the day at the track. As you can see here, Riley has died and gone to heaven. His Husqvarna is standing on its own. Thunder again. You wanna watch me fall, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can make this. But you can do it. Oh. Keep going. I can't. <laughs> I got these stupid ass crocs on it. <laughs> All right, so it rained out today, which cut off quite a few, probably about two hours of our riding experience. Anyways, uh, after the rain stopped, it was super slick, really hard to ride to get any traction anywhere, especially with my bald tire that I have. Started to dry up a little bit, things started to reshape, and it was amazing. Got to try out Noah's new bike. It is, I don't even know what it is. It's a KTM 250 XC, so it's got a kickstand. Um, and then I also rode my dad's bike. Super cool, uh, definitely different ergonomics on both of those. A lot different than my bike. I'm really digging the two stroke power though. It's just totally different than my four stroke. We'll see where this takes us. I don't know, maybe a two stroke in the future, 125 or 250. I'm not too sure. I don't know if I wanna go Husky or K2. 
KTM either, but we'll decide when the time comes. As for my clutch, um, so I had a bolt right here. She completely stripped everything. We need a new clutch, okay? So she's held on by zip ties 100%. This is probably, hopefully, hopefully cross the fingers that this is the last ride on this clutch. Um, we might end up going another week, I don't know. I just hope that we have one by the races October 31st and November 1st. Uh, during that though, super solid sesh, didn't get a lot of footage, but I'll try to make something, something out of it. Time to head home.